The Reverend Solomon Shaw, Solomon Shaw was an American Methodist minister and author. One of his books is called Touching Incidents and Remarkable Answers to Prayer. The book was first published in 1893 and contains a collection of incidents showing the beauty, power and success of prayer. Here is one of them. Many years ago, James Rogers of the Alabama Conference of the Methodist Episcopal Church told the story of Annie Clayton of San Jose in California. As a child, Annie and her sister Fanny took a long walk one Saturday morning to collect some scraps of wood to use as fuel to heat their family's homes. As they returned, Fanny collapsed with the lingering effects of cholera and was unable to proceed. Annie, who was only five years old, was helpless. They sat beside each other in the pavement, not knowing what to do. Finally, Fanny said, You know, Annie, our mother once told us that if we ever got into trouble, we should pray and God would help us. Fanny asked Annie to help her get down on their knees and to hold her upright so they could pray. So there on the pavement, the two sisters prayed earnestly for someone to come along to help them. They then sat down again, waiting to see how God would answer their prayers. Far down the street, they spotted a man who walked out of a factory and looked up the street in curiosity. The girls thought the man was perhaps the one that was God had sent to help them, but the man walked back into the factory. A few minutes later, the same man came out of the factory and looked up the street again, but once again he turned around and went back into the factory. Then the man walked out of the factory for a third time, but this time he was wearing a coat and a hat and started to walk, walk, to walk towards the girls. Approaching the children, the man said in a broken German accent, Oh children, what is the matter? When the girls explained the situation to him, the German hoisted Annie up in his strong, muscular arms and carried her all the way home. Once the girls were safely delivered, the gentleman told the story. He was the owner of an ink factory and had been working hard making up the wage packets for his workers. Suddenly, as he was poring over his books, his eyes had clouded up and his vision became blurred. He had a plain impression in his mind that someone on the street wanted to see him, so he stepped outside and tried to focus his eyes up and down the street. Seeing no one, he returned to his desk and tried to work. The darkness in his vision became even worse, and the impression in his mind was even stronger, so he walked outside again, and seeing no one, again he returned to his work, but this time his fingers wouldn't grasp his pen. He found himself unable to write a word. Moreover, the impression in his mind was one of urgency. So he fetched his coat and hat and walked up the street in bewilderment until he saw the girls who had prayed so earnestly for someone to come along and help him. God had heard and answered their prayers. And God had used a local man to help him. God is always there if you want him to help you. Are you prepared to be there for God if he needs your help? We'll now watch and listen to the second of our testimonies from cadets at Royal Booth College. This time it's from cadet <coughs> Joe Morgan. God 
and it was the love of Jesus that led to my own salvation. Jesus led me to him to visit him. In the scripture used this year for Camp of Sunday, we see the humanity of Jesus in full view. He knew what he had to do, but he had that. When I was called to become an officer, I can assure you that that was not my intention either. But I began the journey, and it would be true to say that I still had doubts. I was sober, I was clear with my debts, I finally had a stable home, and I had met and married a wonderful man. But God was still calling me to give up all this newfound stability and follow him. But I am so glad that I did. Now I am him. I am filled with such a peace that can only come from saying yes to God. So if you believe that you have been called, that you have doubts, I pray that you will have the courage to find that inner peace that allows you to place your trust in him who is faithful. May God bless you all in this day and decision to make. Thank you. We'll ask Christopher to read our Bible reading this morning. It's from Luke chapter 22, verses 38 to 46. It's page 1058. If you don't see the red book. That's Luke chapter 22, verses 39 to 46. Page 1058. And in the call Bible, it's entitled Jesus Prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He then withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Amen. And he will bring us some thoughts on that in just a moment. Let's Going to show you a short video featuring Major Julie Johnson from the candidates unit. She'll be talking about the candidates fund. The candidates <coughs> offers support for cadets who require financial assistance during their training at Willow Community College. Each year we invite congregations to help by giving a free will offering to this fund. And this is something that we can all do and be willing to do as part of our response to God's call. This year, your offering can be given in different ways. By giving through gift, just giving, or if you prefer, a cheque can be sent directly to the candidate unit at William Lee College. Please fully consider if this is something that you can do, because your gift could make a world of difference and make a difference to their world. Thank you. As mentioned by Major Julie, your gift there will support and make a difference to those who will be attending the college and responding to God's call. If you'd like to make a donation towards the Candidates Fund, in addition to the payment methods mentioned by Major Julie on, uh, on the slide, uh, you can now make donations here at the hall today or next Sunday or Thursdays. There's a collection plate just below me on the, the table there. Okay. Uh, do that please. Like a lot of Fanny Crosby's songs, I Am Legal Lord is a personal testimony of her faith. Do you share that faith? Please concentrate on the words of the song. From Hebrews 10 verse 1 says, 
Let us draw dear to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. It's song with 587. I am late.